Thank you. I'm Eric. I work on Android, open source things, uh, Java libraries, and I'm going to be talking about Mashi. Um, who here has played with Mashi at all? Okay, cool. Who here has used JSON before? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a lot about uh, le less Mashi's API and more about how uh, we step from JSON to Mashi and the niceties that Mashi has, uh, has gained from uh, learnings in JSON. So what is Mashi? It's a JSON serialization library. It has both a streaming and an object mapping API. So you can stream things directly from the socket. You know, you're, uh, you're, going, you're, you're pulling things off of the network. And then on top of that, it has uh, your friendly abstraction for mapping this data, all these bytes, into your, um, your Java uh, data classes or value classes um, so that you can use them uh, in an, like, on the application layer in a friendly way. Um, Mashi is also a very uh, compact, small library. And uh, originally written by Scott, Jake, and Jesse, uh, all at Square at the time, uh, a few years ago. And um, you might know Jesse Wilson from writing uh, basically everything. Uh, works a lot on OKHTP. But uh, importantly for this talk, he wrote a lot of JSON 2's API. So when I say upgrading to Mashi, um, it's, not, it's not a slight on JSON in any way. It's very much that uh, it's by the same authors with the same intent um, of, of, providing, uh, of, of providing a better interface uh, for JSON and, uh, and all the things that we learned in making JSON and all the things that JSON 2's API uh, really made handy for developers. So, Mashi is kind of JSON 3, but uh, I kind of think of it as JSON Lite. It's a, it's a smaller API. It is more opinionated about a lot of things. Also, importantly, it's built on OKIO. So OKIO is the bytes library that you use under the hood in OKHTP. And um, basically, um, any kind of IO that you use, it's, it's a lot better than java.io. And um, uh, so, uh, why upgrade to uh, why upgrade to Mashi? Why why now? Why upgrade um, from JSON? Uh, JSON kind of works well enough in a lot of places, and that's really true. Like um, the the reason Mashi is not JSON three is uh, none of the actual maintainers of JSON uh, work at Google right now. Although kind of funny enough, Jake Wharton now does, but it's not really being actively maintained. And um, basically, JSON 3 just wouldn't happen. A lot of um, internal systems at Google and across probably all the companies we work at uh, rely on JSON. And, um, and so it's not, necessarily, it's not necessarily something you have to update. Uh, it's, um, and it's not something a lot of people like, will update. A lot of systems will update. Um, so that's why it's not just purely JSON 3. Um, it's a little bit of just the spiritual successor uh, rather than direct uh, correlation there. So the biggest thing why you would update uh, or like why you might be able to tell your, your, product, your project manager or your uh, engineering manager um, why you might update, JSON is not in active development. Um, it's, it's pretty much... It's not because it's really a, a stable or a complete um, library. It's just really hit the, the pace where um, it's not being actively, there are no active features developed. There's a lot of things that are kind of broken, but JSON 3 just can't happen. It doesn't have enough support for that. Um, so it's just kind of slowed to a crawl. And really, all active development on JSON, you'll really see uh, in the Mashi side. Um, the thing that um, you as an implementer, as a developer, are going to see much more is that JSON is really lenient. 
Um, you can do a lot of really not great things with JSON, and it'll just let, let it slide, and it'll be great until it doesn't work, and then you'll be debugging into a bunch of the source code of JSON and have to figure out why that edge case didn't work. Um, we're going to go over some of the examples where JSON's too lenient, but um, this, is, this is really just across the library and things even uh, like the default uh, Boolean type adapter lets you actually have true and false as string literals rather than as Boolean literals. Um, it, it lets uh, enums just pass, uh, and then you'll get, you'll get nulls when, when you have a, an unknown enum string type. Um, and, and it also lets uh, y you use platform, you get tied to platform types. You could, you could use something like, you could say, JSON, can you uh, deserialize this array list for me? And it'll try to do it to the best of its ability. And, um, and then you're really tied to that platform concrete type of array list. And then your Android version updates, and then now it's not going to work as you expect. So JSON's just too lenient there, and, um, and you'll get subtle bugs. Um, also, it has a rather large API. It, um, uh, it has a lot of things that aren't quite clear. They're order of precedence for when you have, uh, for when your type adapter will get called uh, or created. Um, it also has things like uh, JSON deserializer and JSON serializer, and it's not quite clear when to use uh, when to use certain uh, certain parts of the API. And a lot of it is like baggage from JSON one, and um, and a lot of things will uh, because it can, because it's not so clear uh, can cause performance issues. Like if you're using JSON deserializer instead of the new uh, or the the type adapter APIs, then uh, you'll lose streaming support and you'll basically be buffering your entire objects at once rather than feeding it down the line. Um, so Mashi aims to have a more opinionated API uh, to prevent yourself um, from making mistakes and to encourage you to do the most uh, efficient thing and performant thing. Um, one of uh, the things that's been slightly improved in JSON is error handling, but it's still not great. You'll get, uh, they're kind of all over the place. You'll get I.O. exceptions in different places. Uh, again, and it's things where you'll have to go in and debug the source of JSON to figure out where it's coming from. Um, Mashi is pretty clear on exceptions. It throws a subclass of I.O. exception for when there's actually an I.O. exception. Um, so when you've gone into a tunnel and you can't pull down any more of, uh, of those bytes, then um, you just get an I.O. exception. And then when there's actually a problem, when um, you were expecting an integer, but it was a but it was a string, or the other way around. Um, you're going to get a friendly JSON data, data exception and uh, be able to solve the problem more easily there. One of Mashi's so two of Mashi's goals are really uh, to be really small, to be really performant, so you can you know run it on Android, not just uh, on your JVM, but um, but also to make uh, your life as a developer really easy so that um, you can sit down, you can read the API docs, you can read the, read the readme in 30 minutes, and you know exactly what you need to do. Uh, and it can just handle um, what exactly um, can handle your, your more complex use cases, but again, is, uh, has that focused API to, uh, so that you can understand it readily. And that's why I'm not really going to be going over a lot of the API, because it would be a failure of Mashi if it weren't clear um, from the docs. And, um, and of course, the other thing is very small. Uh, Mashi is, um, has significantly fewer methods than, um, than JSON. But uh, this is assuming you already have OKIO OK in your project, because a lot of the heavy lifting is actually taken care of by OKIO. OK 
And since modern Java developers are using things like OKHTP, um, we already have OKIO in our projects. Um, I don't expect this to be really like a game changer, really to be uh, to push somebody over the edge to um, try Mashi, um, but it's there. It's it's slightly smaller. Those uh, those sizes are of the deck size that's added to your uh, final binary. And then I'm going to go over some of the big uh, optimizations and API niceties of Mashi. I would say um, the API niceties are really the big thing. Uh, I'm going to talk about some actual performance optimizations, but, um, but the API is what's really going to save you a lot of effort um, in your time as a developer. Um, because, and I, I consider a lot of the performance um, to not be as big of a deal because most of the time when we're using things like Mashi, we're using it on the network and a lot of the latency from the network uh, just overshadows the performance time um, of, actual, uh, of your actual um, serialization library, assuming that you're doing streaming and not buffering an entire model into memory. So the big, uh, two big things. The first big thing in uh, Mashi's optimization handbag is uh, saving, um, saving buffer segments, uh, and it works well with other OKIO, OKIO users. So if you're using OKHTP and retrofit, uh, this is really handy because uh, you don't have to have multiple references the same, um, to the same data because uh, OKIO actually internally will just share these uh, buffer segments um, across users of OKIO statically. Uh, the second thing is that it, uh, uh, Mashi will avoid allocating strings while deserializing. So this is a big thing, if uh, uh, especially when you use uh, reflection. So the default um, the default adapters that you use when you uh, when you're when you're using Mashi or JSON are using reflection to set your fields and such the values to your fields with your model objects um, in JSON. When you've uh, you've got like, you know your data class and you've got um, some fields in it, and then JSON has to know about the the names of those fields, and so those are strings, and then we have to allocate those strings when we're deserializing, and then um, and then when we're done, we've just they had to be garbage collected. So there's a, there's a little bit of a performance hit there, and it's a bigger deal when you've got lists and you just you're just over and over allocating all these strings, throwing them away. Um, Mashi does a smart thing uh, that's actually an abstraction uh, borrowed from OKIO, which is an options API that we'll go over in a little bit. Um, but you basically pre-allocate these strings and then can just get the index of the uh, string in the options uh, uh, data type so that you're not, you, you basically pre-allocated these strings and you're not allocating them as you're streaming. So how to upgrade. So now we're going to be talking about going from JSON to Mashi, um, like given, those, um, given that uh, value proposition. The first thing, I, or I think the plurality of people might notice, um, is there's no field naming policy. JSON, this is something that I would say is just uh, too lenient of an API, uh, too awkward of an API for, uh, that JSON had. Um, you, this was things like uh, you could ha you, um, most of your your JSON, your server, your servers saying, okay, it's snake case probably, um, and then you as a Java developer go, well, I want it to be camel case, um, and then you tell JSON, okay, map all of my camel case things to um, all of my camel case fields to snake case uh, automatically or kebab case. There are a few different field naming policies. Um, Mashi doesn't have this. And um, the reason is that it's awkward for may, may, maybe mainly um, just searching. So when your server developer goes in your code base and says, OK, I need to find the underscore name, um, 
uh, now I can't find it. And, it. and your server developer doesn't know that you have this weird field naming policy that, that, can, that tells JSON internally to map your camel case to, uh, to snake case. Um, so then he just doesn't find it across your code base and causes a lot of confusion. He has to contact you, um, et cetera. Um, Jesse wrote this uh, almost two years ago um, on your field, your strict naming conventions um, are a liability. Uh, I encourage you to read it. I'll post the slides um, to um, after the talk. Uh, there are going to be a lot of links. Um, and, and so he covers this. And also, it's just kind of a waste of computer time uh, to, to need to do this. Um, and the bigger, like, uh, more, more my opinion, um, or the more of an opinionated take on it is that um, I really think it's nice to stay in the domain of the language that you're using. So when you have these uh, Java models that are reflecting your JSON models, I actually think it's nice to stay in whatever your server says, if that's uh, mo most of the time a uh, snake case. And we actually, as Android developers, do this all the time with XML. Our XML layouts, and we normally give our view IDs, we do snake case. And even though we, re we reference them in Java, um, we're not, we're not offended by that. We know we actually see it as an indication that, oh, I'm referencing something that belongs in XML. So this is kind of an approach I've taken. I actually just model my, J my Java models, uh, my Java data classes, based on what the actual JSON naming is. And it's a signal to me as a developer, OK, this is a JSON model. This is, this is what I'm talking about. It's not, it's not my database model. It's not really my application model. It's exactly what my JSON says. Um, so uh, this doesn't mean that serialized name is gone. So a lot of the times you, you might have something that's called object. And so without, um, so without some way of mapping that easily, uh, that would be a huge problem in Java because we couldn't, we couldn't map our JSON name object to something because it's a, it's a protected keyword in Java. So serialized, na serialized names still exist. This solves the case for if you really need to use camel case, um, if, it's, if it's a company policy, your check style or something requires it. Um, you, you can't use field naming policy, but you can go to every single field and still annotate it with at JSON. And so then the reflective, uh, the reflective cl class JSON adapter will look at at JSON and say, OK, this is the real name. Don't use, the, don't use Java's field name here. Use the at JSON. So this is one of the things you'll change if you use at serialized name, serialized name in JSON. Uh, you got to change that to at JSON. Um, uh, for Mashi, that's the name of the annotation to use there. Yeah, and so this is what I said is uh, I personally prefer, I encourage other people to, to try it out, um, just to use the domain's, the domain's um, naming convention as a reminder of what, uh, what your data is actually talking about. So the streaming API, um, this might uh, this might be a little bit lower level than maybe application developers always deal with, um, but the good news is it's really the same. Uh, it's a JSON actually has a really good API for streaming. The simple JSON reader and JSON writer are uh, very similar in Mashi. Um, really just have to change your import statements. And you get all the nice uh, read Boolean, uh, begin object, end, end array, all those uh, very high level function uh, methods that we use um, uh, from JSON. It also has a few nice additions. Um, so we're going to talk again about the JSON reader options and also this set fail on unknown, uh, the JSON reader adds. Those are the two, I'd say, biggest additions um, that, uh, that the streaming API in Mashi has gained over JSON. Um, the JSON reader options, 
uh, again, prepares strings ahead of time. So you create an options. You just tell it, OK, these are, the, these are like the keys. These are the, the keys for my JSON object. Uh, these are the field names. And um, now we've just pre-allocated them once. And then we can read them right. And then we can read the options directly off the input source. Um, so there's the API. Uh, you can select name. This will just grab. Um, uh, this will grab the next name, and then select name, select string. Similar. Um, the result of this will return the index in the options. So uh, if the if the next string or if the next name there in uh, in our stream is key one, then it'll return zero. If it's key two, it'll return uh, one. If it's key three, it'll return negative one. So, uh, it says it, we don't have that um, thing, and you should probably skip the value. Um, set fail on unknown. This is a really great debugging option. Um, so this basically just tells the, the JSON reader, uh, next time you try to call skip value, throw, throw a JSON data exception. And you probably don't want this in production code, but when you're, when you're writing out, when you, your server developer says, I've got this new API, it's going to give you this data, and you need to show it on this screen or something, um, you can know that you're actually consuming all of the data that your server developer has given you. So if there's an extra field, you forgot to use the user's last name or something, um, you're going to find out about it immediately. It's going to say, oh, I tried to skip this value, but really, you should have mapped this value to something. OK, and then object mapping. This is more of what us application developers uh, use. This is the higher level of abstraction uh, where we actually use, uh, we actually map our JSON to Java models. Uh, so the type adapter API is really good, and it's just been renamed from Ashi. It's just called JSON adapter uh, to distinguish itself. Um, it doesn't have a, so Mashi doesn't have a documentation level API. That might be one of the biggest things uh, you first encounter. So the JSON object and the Mashi object, these instances that we use, these are, um, these are really holders. They're more like caches for our adapters. Um, so we have all of these type adapters, you know, our string type adapter, maybe like my data adapter. And they hold they hold caches for these adapters. But if it's a type if it's a type adapter that you're really going to be using a lot, it's better that you actually cache it yourself. So there's um, uh, Mashi doesn't actually know anything about your document. It just knows uh, the reader that you give it, and uh, and it goes through until you finish. Uh, consuming in the reader. So if you need to do any assertions that you've com consumed the entire document, um, you need to do that more at the application layer. So there's not any JSON, or there's not any Mashi dot from JSON. You're actually going to need to get the adapter. So JSON had this API, uh, get adapter. Uh, it's basically the same in Mashi. You get the adapter, and um, you should cache your adapters. Uh, again, Jesse wrote another blog post um, about reflection machines. Um, the Mashi's JSON adapter and JSON's type adapter are examples of reflection machines, and that they have a factory API where you actually do the heavy lifting, and you need to do all of the upfront work. So by default, you know, Mashi uses um, a reflection for all of your custom classes to set all the fields. Um, so you might think that that's expensive, but really all the hard work you need to do is up front, getting at, getting at all the fields and then um, and then, uh, but actually binding to these fields is is not very expensive. So if you do it up front and you only and you keep around your instance of the adapter, then the work is already done just once when you're actually creating the adapter. And then when you're actually using it, when you're streaming your data, um, then it's uh, then it's much less expensive. Um, so that's the idea of kind of a, a machine of. Um, and knowing when to cache uh, data just once. Um, so object mapping without JSON's bad leniency. Uh, platform types, um, 
require explicit JSON adapters in MASHI. So JSON, like I mentioned, was really lenient about this. Um, if you've ever developed kind of a, a maybe moderate to more complex application, you've probably run into JSON's weird um, date formatting. So that's kind of a whole uh, issue on its own. Um, but you could you could get tied down to JSON's default date uh, date type adapter and um, and then not really know uh, the right way of approaching it to fix it. Um, so instead, um, you have to you have to supply explicit uh, adapters. There's an artifact there's an artifact in the Mashi repository um, for uh, the common um, uh, the common RFC 339, I think it is, uh, date type. Um, so that'll co cover most of your common use cases. But just know that you need to you need to include that and be able to um, if you have date types in your JSON data. Um, also, things like array list. Uh, this is kind of something I commonly saw in a lot of um, code that JSON touched. Um, just use list most of the time. Um, but uh, again, the reason we don't let you use array list or any platform type is you get tied down to the platform. Like there, uh, you could you could use uh, an Android type, and then you'd end up uh, your Android version upgrades, but you were you were you were relying on those implementation details of like the field names in point, and um, and then Android upgrades, and then that no longer applies, and you've just ruined all of your JSON models. Um, so if you need to do that, you need to use the public API of those types um, and supply a direct, uh, a direct JSON adapter um, for them. Um, so uh, also, Mashi, this is very, very similar. JSON had something pretty similar. Um, wrapping your, your JSON adapters, um, Similar, similar. The type adapter had very similar things. Uh, serialized nulls, um, so that um, by default, when you are serializing, if your uh, field maps to something um, that, uh, that that you just have a null value in, it just doesn't serialize that. It doesn't. Um, but if you tell it to serialize nulls, um, it'll actually it'll actually have the field, have the key, and then and then the value will be the null literal in JSON. Um, no safe, so yeah, what it sounds like. Um, lenient, uh, so again, by default, not lenient on a lot of things, uh, like quote, like if you have, um, but if your your server is weird and like maybe it has like a lot of weird HTML escaping or has um, missing quotation marks where it's supposed to, maybe for the keys in your JSON objects, uh, you'll want lenient on your um, on your JSON adapters. Indent, so this is basically again kind of a debugging feature. If you need to pretty print your things, you can uh, add in like four spaces or add in a tab or something um, for the indents in pretty printing your JSON. Uh, fail on unknown, we covered that. That's the new thing for Mashi. Um, and so this just tells the, uh, the JSON adapter to temporarily make the JSON reader fail on unknown. And, uh, and then when, it, when, the, when the JSON adapter is done with it, then um, go back to whatever the JSON reader was using before. So uh, object mapping, the two things that you'll notice are missing are JSON, serializer, JSON serializer, serializer and JSON deserializer. These are APIs in JSON that were not good. Um, well, they, uh, they're kind of baggage. They were easy for a lot of people to implement for their custom logic. Um, but they didn't stream. So they were actually buffering your entire value at once in memory. And um, so you lose all the performance benefits. Um, and it's also just an, an added API. Really, um, hopefully you don't run into this, but um, the, the better thing that all, that all uh, new code should be written in, in is uh, the, the type adapter API. Um, and of course, in Mashi, the JSON adapter API. Um, so hopefully, uh, you're using type adapter and type adapter factory. These map basically one to one with JSON adapter and JSON adapter.factory in Mashi. 
Um, the other thing uh, is there's no more type token API, which is really nice. You'll kind of see this as a pattern, too, in Mashi. It, uh, Mashi tends to prefer, prefer, prefer um, normal Java types that you already know. Um, so you actually just end up using the, the java.lang.reflect type uh, API more than type token. Um, and instead of the type token and having to subclass it and do kind of weird things, um, you, uh, there's actually a types factory uh, class in Mashi. Uh, it's a public API and it has all sorts of niceties. Um, again, like not going to go over the whole API, but basically everything you had in type token, you actually just use the types, uh, types API to be able to just create normal Java types. Um, so here's a common example. Uh, if you have a list of strings, um, you had to use the type token and then create a type token, and then basically you had this type token type that only JSON understood. In Mashi, um, you can just have a normal, this will just return a normal java.lang.reflect.type. Um, there's another thing that's not, um, it's not quite, uh, 100% in um, Mashi that you maybe should be aware of if you use enums in your JSON. Uh, it definitely wasn't 100% in JSON. Um, but if you had an unknown type, so your enums, you say uh, they're, they're just strings. But uh, at your application layer, you want to think about them as enums. But in, J but in your, uh, your JSON, obviously, they're just strings. So but if you ran into an unknown string in JSON, again, it was really lenient, and it would just give you null. So you couldn't tell it to, you know, there wasn't an easy API to tell it to give you a fallback uh, value or anything. It would just give you null. And um, that's not super great. It's a little bit awkward to have a null uh, enum type. Um, normally, I'd say prefer just like uh, adding another type for unknown or something. Um, so the JSON's API wasn't great there. Um, but then in Mashi, if you have an unknown type, it does the right thing it, um, for the common case. It does the right thing in that it throws a JSON data exception. It says, I don't, I, this was an enum, so it has to be strictly these values. I didn't find, these strict, I didn't find that uh, one of these strings um, in the JSON. I don't know what to do with it. Here's a JSON data exception. Um, but if you maybe don't control your server, your server team doesn't communicate to you all the time or something, um, that can be weird. Like maybe, maybe your server upgrades, and then now uh, you have a new type. It has a different string. And you don't, want, you don't want to fail your deserialization. You don't want to fail the whole network request. Um, you want a fallback type. Um, Mashi doesn't have uh, a great. Uh, solution to this currently. So um, the I've actually written an enum with default uh, with default JSON adapter implementation, which again uh, I'll post this post the slides and you get the link. Um, but I want to hear from kind of the community. There's an issue on Mashi uh, on GitHub for it. I want to hear like plus one the issue, uh, give feedback, give any comments if you have any idea. We're still kind of looking for what the right API might be to give this fallback. Um, but for now, there's a, I've written an implementation um, that basically copies out the enum JSON adapter that's internal in Mashi. Um, so the other thing is special casing type qualifiers. Um, so in uh, JSON, we had this at J uh, we had this um, excuse me um, we had this at JSON adapter, not to be confused with Mashi's JSON adapter, um, that would tell it to special case this type, and it was kind of a type qualifier. Uh, the weird thing was it wasn't the order of precedence for when this type adapter was going to be used isn't very clear. Mashi solves this really cool, uh, really well with um, with a JSON qualifier annotations, um, and uh, so you can actually have this type type qualifier. So here we have like a wrap string, and um, and then this is what it might uh, this is what it might have looked like in JSON. You had to write all this, uh, and then in Mashi. Um, here's what our wrapped uh, JSON uh, qualifier thing, might, JSON adapter might look like. Um, this is 
uh, you'll notice that this kind of varies from our type adapter uh, implementation in JSON, as it's just a normal Java object. So that brings us to easier JSON adapters exist in Mashi. So um, this is what a, a very formal JSON adapter factory might look like when you have a custom type in, um, uh, or when you need to do something interesting with, uh, with Mashi. And so you have all of this logic, and you got to remember, OK, if it's not this point, I need to, uh, I, I, I need to tell it to continue on down the list of, uh, of adapters. And, um, and then here's our actual meet. Well, uh, Mashi makes this much easier. You can actually just feed it. You can just actually create normal objects and feed it to, uh, feed it to the Mashi builder. And, um, and then reflectively, it'll actually create the, the proper factory for you. So adapters become much easier in Mashi um, rather than, rather than uh, its, strict, its strict factories or JSON's uh, uh, type adapter factories. Um, so again, even easier JSON adapters. We have, uh, we have things you can, um, you can create these. From JSON is the annotation. It doesn't do anything magic. It's not, it's not an annotation processor. It's just, it just tells Mashi um, when Mashi does, uh, looks, for it, re looks for the annotation reflectively on your method, uh, how to create the factory, um, how to create the f ref uh, factory when you're building your Mashi builder. Um, so it's really easy to add in delegates to, uh, to create these more complex adapters. Um, polymorphic types, this is, uh, this is something that's more of an advanced use case where you have something like, uh, like animal and based on this type field, um, we need to deserialize it differently. Um, so you might have a dog that, that again like has a string, but your cat has uh, an integer. And then we have a list of all these things coming down from our server, and we need to do different things based on what type they are. Um, JSON had, uh, again, uh, its own types for this. It had JSON element, which could be a JSON object. It could be a JSON array. Uh, or basically, it could, it could contain a JSON object. It could contain a JSON array, a string, or primitives. Uh, Mashi just uses regular Java object. It, in, uh, and that object could be a map, a list, or string, or primitives, because those are all the things that your JSON could be. Um, so when we get to these polymorphic types, uh, this is what it looked like in JSON. Uh, you would you would read out this uh, the the type in your JSON. You'd have to get it as a JSON object, um, and then uh, and then in Mashi you would uh, or I mean sorry in JSON then you would get it as uh, a JSON tree to get the 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 current um, thing and decide which adapter to delegate to. In Mashi. Uh, there's this neat read JSON value thing that actually just buffers the entire value, similar to JSON, um, but in uh, in just a Java map way or a Java object way. There, we're telling it it is a map, um, and then we say, okay, this is uh, this is the value. Delegate it to this uh, our cat adapter uh, because the type was this cat. Um, JSON handles the common case with a runtime uh, type adapter factory. Uh, Mashi doesn't really have um, uh, an extra, like a sample um, uh, API or design for this yet. So again, kind of looking for community uh, contributions or like ideas on what the common use case for that is. Um, updating piecemeal. Uh, this is again something you can look at uh, later, but. Um, the retrofit makes this really easy because it actually passes down these annotations to its converter factories. Um, so uh, without getting into retrofit's API, uh, there's sample code. You can look at how it's implemented. But this is a really easy way of saying, OK, only new code you deserialize with Mashi. Everything, uh, all, of, uh, all, of my, all of my new endpoints should use Mashi. All of the other endpoints should fall back to JSON. And, um, uh, and a quick note, uh, auto value Mashi does uh, it exists. Um, uh, Ryan Harder uh, works on this and, um, and others. And um, it's a 
basically really simple API. Just remember to have this static method. Even better, you can just have uh, this, this abstract class, and this will create a factory for all of the types that you've annotated with, uh, with auto value. And then you just apply this to your Mashi Builder. Um, you, you, uh, you, you apply it to your Mashi Builder, and then it will um, use all of the uh, use all of the correct adapters. And uh, auto value Mashi also uses the select name trick. So uh, it uses the JSON reader.options um, API, again, for performance reasons. That's super cool. Uh, a few resources. Uh, J this is Jesse's um, announcement blog post. Talks about some of the advantages. Talks about other places to go to see it. Uh, also, um, Jake's uh, talk on a few OK libraries, uh, talks more about OKIO OK and its types, and also how it applies to uh, Mashi, and um, how Mashi retrofit and OKHTP and OK, uh, are all built kind of on, on OKIO OK and, uh, and are really strong together. Also, I monitor Stack Overflow. Uh, Jesse also, I believe, monitors Stack Overflow uh, most of the time. And uh, so ask any questions there. Um, we try to respond there. And also, you know, I, I'm on Twitter and uh, most places, and feel free to ask questions. Um, yeah, and so uh, contribute. One thing I'll say is I didn't really mention um, Kotlin, uh, a Kotlin JSON adapter uh, does exist, so I didn't go over it, um, but, uh, but if you're using Kotlin um, with your data classes, then Mashi is going to be a lot friendlier to you than JSON.